INC is a proud member of the Siam City Cement Group Public Limited, a leading cement manufacturer in Southeast Asia. The Siam City Cement Group provides world-class construction materials to a host of countries around the world. This includes Cambodia, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia and Sri Lanka. With a plethora of landmarks and buildings that define the skylines of these countries, the Siam Cement Group pledges to be a role model in corporate governance and sustainable development. INC Cement, Sri Lanka's premier cement manufacturer, is the brand behind our country's leading cement products and the driving force behind making Sri Lanka more sustainable. With a reputation built on outstanding performance in the quality of our products, unparalleled customer service, the dedication of our employees, our respect for the communities in which we operate and our ambition to set the standards for the industry of tomorrow. We have contributed to the growth of Sri Lanka with iconic developments across the island, just to name a few. The Lotus Tower, Altia Residencies, the Colombo South Harbour, Southern Expressway, Matala Airport, the Kalladi Bridge, the Kotalavala Defence University, Mahinda Rajapaksha International Cricket Stadium. INSI has cemented its position as the most preferred local manufacturer of cement in Sri Lanka. With its widespread distribution network comprised of over 7,000 dealers in retail segment located island-wide. Today, we have two plants in Puttalam and Gaul and two terminals in Gaul and Colombo. INSEE's Sunstar brand is Sri Lanka's first cement product to be awarded the Green Labelling Certification by the Green Building Council and was the first blended cement to launch in Sri Lanka. INSEE has a wide portfolio of cements and services to suit all your construction needs. The most popular among them, INSEE Sunstar, INSEE Mahavali Marine Plus, INSEE Extra for mass pouring concrete, INSEE Rapid Flow Plus, INSEE Eco Cycle, INSEE Concrete, Convert by INSEE, state-of-the-art innovation and development facility. Having been a part of Sri Lanka for almost a decade, we will continue to build on our long heritage of shared loyalty, creating trusting relationships with our business partners, people and community, and delivering our promise of building the nation. Sir, over to you to present your session. Uh, thank you, Dilsha. Uh, thank you very much. So I'm very much uh, delighted to uh, present uh, the work that I have, uh, we have been doing in Peradini. Uh, and as uh, you know, this is the one, uh, the very first time that uh, such a study has been conducted uh, on all buildings. Um, so uh, let me first uh, uh, give an, a brief uh, introduction of the contents of my presentation. So I will be briefly introducing uh, about tall buildings and what is structural health monitoring. Then uh, the one of the very key parameter, the natural frequency of the tall buildings for wind design, how we can use it, how we can select it, and damping ratios of tall buildings for wind design. So basically my focus is on wind design. Then I will be discussing on natural period and damping ratio identification from measured full scale data. So that is the, uh, the emphasis of today's presentation. Uh, so we, uh, we have been, uh, you, uh, designing and constructing buildings, but uh, identification of uh, their important parameters by uh, monitoring um, such not has been done. Then I uh, will uh, briefly discuss about the evaluation of habitability to uh, building vibration. So <clears throat> as you know, it's uh, all everybody is aware uh, that the definitions of tall buildings, uh, it's uh, many uh, references has many different definitions, but uh, uh, in uh, Council of Urban uh, on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitats, you have 50 meters. But when you consider the uh, con uh, the condition in Sri Lanka, so we have uh, this. Uh, in 1985, we had only the POC building, and it's 19 uh, 2019 we have. Uh, Okay, right, sorry. Right. Okay, okay right. Uh, so we had uh, BOC building, and in 2019, we had Alta building. And uh, in uh, 2023, we are going to have much taller building. So that now everybody is uh, very much aware that uh, the height of buildings is going to uh, increase. Uh, in coming years, so we are uh, uh, engineers have a uh, challenge, challenging task. Uh, as you know, when the height increase, 
so the wind uh, is one of the uh, governing factor in design so we, we have uh, not uh, much uh, uh, experience with the earthquake so i think wind is the uh, main factor that we are being considering and you know there are different types of uh, accelerations uh, that you have to consider so there are basically we do uh, for uh, habitability and uh, safety limit state in wind design and uh, not only the buildings but when you design buildings uh, wind around buildings also uh, uh, one of the important factor uh, so and the other one is uh, when you have uh, these taller buildings, so you have to use different structural forms. And uh, just to know that uh, today I am, we, are, I, we are not here to discuss about how to design a tall building. Uh, this is uh, mainly uh, how, what we have learned from uh, the monitoring of tall buildings, how we can adapt it to design better buildings uh, in the future. So uh, now uh, let me go to this. Uh, presentation that the, the response of a structure subjected to dynamic loading such as earthquake strong winds and explosion is uh, you know we can simulate it using a finite element methods or any other numerical uh, methods uh, so their efficiency in simulating the structural response is uh, best assessed by the uh, availability of experimental and test results such as results of a host or ambient vibration test now dynamic uh, response of tall buildings you know it's very sensitive to the uh, the assumption that you made uh, in uh, natural frequency and damping ratios so this damping is generally associated uh, with the reduction in the dynamic uh, response due to the energy dissipation and non structural components there are two components uh, and foundation so in uh, wind design we are not uh, discussing about uh, the the structural members going into the non linear range so basically we are discussing about the elastic damping and uh, maybe uh, aerodynamics damping so this is a further illustration of how uh, the dynamic magnification factor uh, can be uh, so this uh, dynamic magnification factor uh, uh, can be uh, been made, uh, maybe changed uh, due to this uh, natural frequency and damping ratio so uh, you can see when the damping changes uh, so there's uh, more damping you have lesser uh, magnification and uh, when the uh, frequency is close to the na natural frequency uh, you have uh, much higher magnification so and the damping if i uh, just uh, for people who are not uh, too much familiar with this topic i will uh, just uh, it is uh, i measure this uh, proper uh, property of uh, you know dissipating energy or this, uh, you know uh, reducing the response so we, we can use you, you can see uh, when there is a, a two different uh, amount of damping in the structure how the response uh, can be changed so th these are the two uh, fundamental things that uh, you should know in the beginning so this identification of parameters of building is important for the structural monitoring or the damage detection of buildings due to uh, some excitation or the uh, passage of time so you will change, change over time so there will be uh, properties will be changed it's the uh, same to us uh, same like humans so uh, when we go, go old our ecg will change the variation on vibration characteristics reflects changes in the physical parameters of the system indicate certain cracks or damage caused by failure of members uh, in the system so the natural frequency mode shapes modal damping ratios there are other things these are the one uh, the primary characteristics that we um, think uh, up to now but there are some more so I, we, we will see now uh, when you come to the structural health monitoring uh, it is now uh, we should know now uh, why we have been to implement this because now we know a uh, structure tall building uh, has not uh, been start maybe in uh, 60 70 maybe years ago then now uh, still has, i think no but no none of the structure have reached its, its service life so uh, still we don't have problem so this uh, health monitoring is a process of implement uh, implementing a damage detection and characterizing a strategy for engineering structures then uh, so there are main objectives perform an enhancement of existing structures that is one of the uh, 
objective of structural head monitoring monitoring of structures so they are uh, affected by external factors and feedback loop to improve the future design uh, based on experience uh, so decline in construction uh, and growth in maintenance needs uh, the move towards performance based design philosophy so we need this so here there are health monitoring uh, involved health uh, operational evaluation data feature extraction statistic model development then uh, main parts are de uh, determination of uh, damage whether there is a damage existing in the structure determination of the damage geometry location uh, quantification of the damage severity and the prediction of the remaining life of the structure so these things are uh, the important uh, parts of uh, health monitoring now if we discuss more now this operational now you have you can see uh, in the chart there uh, there is uh, there is uh, you you have life safety uh, and economic uh, justification to perform shm so many people do not want to perform this because it's very costly so they uh, they there should be a good reason for people to conduct this otherwise people would always like to avoid and definition of damage to be detected how to be so before you start you should know what you are looking for and operational and environmental condition should be known and data acquisition limitation you cannot uh, sometimes you cannot extract certain uh, data so you can uh, so you have to focus on which uh, based on the what type of uh, damage you have to detect you have to uh, select which type of acquis uh, data acquisition to be uh, performed then the data acquisition there is a, a normalizing and cl uh, cleansing so you have uh, a type of an amount of data you sometimes collecting less data no no meaning more data there is also again there is no meaning then uh, periodically uh, so when you want to do it's in a, when is monthly or six month or one year or one time is enough then uh, there is a, uh, how you are going to uh, you know at the different times the different uh, conditions so how you are going to uh, use the data then uh, third one is the feature is extraction and data compression so selection of best feature of data for damage detection so uh, what you are looking for change of fundamental frequency change of mode shapes or change of some other statistical uh, characteristics so st statistical di distribution of features or i you are looking at so there is some uh, you you have to use some kind of machine learning or artificial neural network or some statistical uh, methods like a psd or something uh, in this regards so the data condensation then uh, once you found that uh, statistical model development so there is uh, you have to know uh, what is the damage and the location and how much extension the type the remaining useful life time of the stru structure or it is uh, whether you diagnostic it correctly so now now uh, why these all things uh, we are discussing is now uh, what happened the my famous question that i asked to, uh, from uh, people who uh, there are many experts in tall building area in sri lanka so so i asked them uh, normally what happened when a skyscraper outlived its useful life so how we are going to uh, address this i think not in my i i, I will fortunate if i was live, live up to that much in uh, when the sri lankan tall buildings live uh, reach the its lifetime maybe in uh, 50 another 50 years time 60 years time so what are the problems that we are looking at whether we need subtle and monitoring uh, you will decide after my presentation so when uh, it come to the structural health monitoring so i will briefly uh, show you uh, some uh, simple example that we have done at our uh, peradini together with uh, dr damika uh, there is a simple i have set up we have set up a simple beam and what we have done uh, to show this also beam there is uh, we have uh, introduced damage to the beam so that uh, we have a undamaged beam and a damaged beam so we know uh, we can see how the health monitoring this is a simple example that i am going to present to you uh, that how you can use uh, this different types of techniques in health monitoring and what are the challenges we have learned so now in this case we had uh, this uh, we have introduced uh, different uh, cuts in the uh, structure so uh, what we have done is uh, uh, now i will sh show you some video how we have done it very simply 
uh, what we have done is uh, we use uh, then uh, some huts and we did, did a free vibration so we applied a force uh, and just uh, after that we release it so the structure uh, undergo uh, a free vibration so we have done it several times uh, for one trial run then the next one what we have done is right so we have now uh, different uh, damage scenarios undamaged one and damaged one so what we have done is uh, we try to see how the structure how, the, how we can see the basic parameters that we are always looking at uh, the very first things that we always as a structural engineers we are very much familiar with this natural frequency and uh, damping so what we try to do is in by regarding doing this like this uh, eight cases but each case has dif um, many different types of trial runs so there are uh, in this case uh, so there is uh, several trial runs and uh, then what we have done is try to see whether we can predict the damping ratio and natural frequency is there any changes due to this uh, damage so what we have found is uh, Actually, it is very hard to detect damage in that kind of scenario. It is very small damage we are inducing. It does not reflect in global response. Now, the, the, the word that I am going to put forward is a global response. The change of global response is not, uh, it's not this ch slight change in the uh, damage does not reflect in the global response parameters like the natural frequency and damping. Uh, so what we could do is we could not actually identify and changing these parameters natural frequency. But uh, what I have uh, further done is we, I have employed uh, something called a machine learning for this process. So I will tell you uh, what has happened. So machine learning is another part of uh, artificial. It's a branch of artificial neural network. In artificial neural network, what we have been doing is we have a data. So we train the data. So and we use that to uh, uh, what what the the, the term is. Uh, uh, autom auto automate automate the system so next time when you give data it knows what to do so but in machine learning we have additional uh, components so what we know the uh, we what we do is mainly extract the features then we use different another types of algorithm uh, to uh, use that features to extract uh, different uh, what is the required parameters or identify the anomalies or uh, in the data so then uh, now what we have here is we i have now uh, the data of uh, the uh, the undamaged state and damaged state so while having this undamaged state and damaged state data so what i have uh, done is i have applied the uh, pca based that is a principal component analysis uh, based uh, uh, methods for damage detection so this is the uh, final outcome now you can see and un un there is three uh, i have use three samples from the undamaged case and there is a damaged case so there are one two three four uh, five six seven eight damaged cases then you can see there there is a nine there are some sometimes it's not uh, giving better uh, because we i think there is not enough uh, data to train this uh, to comparison uh, for in this particular method but i think this machine learning worked well in this particular scenario compared to the natural frequency and damping ratio so that's it different aspects now uh, another study that uh, we have we, we have done also involves uh, several uh, people from uh, peradeniya and some people from india we had another uh, wrote another we had used another technique that is uh, we use uh, in uh, damage detection on edge uh, it is uh, in network damage detection which we use the probabilistic uh, models so a statistical feature estimating the probability density, density function of a uh, multi cumulative gaussian distribution so what we hear also what we did is we try to uh, you know see how accurately we can predict the uh, the, the damage in uh, healthy conditions uh, in the damage condition compared to the so these are two different types of uh, things we have uh, doing so we are expecting to conduct this uh, similar studies for buildings now when it come to tall buildings now we you have seen i think what i wanted to show here is that we need for in order to do uh, you know conduct such health monitoring if you said health monitoring we need data so we need data of uh, undamaged case and damaged case so damaged scenario 
Now, as you know, when it comes to tall buildings, we, nothing has been damaged, so we have to. So all the tall buildings that has been constructed, we can consider it as an undamaged case. So now the damage scenario may be come after 20, 30 years, but we should have a baseline data. So we should have data at this particular stage where there's an undamaged for several and the quality of data that you are giving up the output is purely depend on the quality of data that you have. So I think there should be adequate data that uh, maybe we should uh, have a monthly or daily, so which is a real time monitoring system that is much better. But unfortunately, we don't have it in Sri Lanka in most, I think it's one particular building I have seen uh, people have implemented, but in other buildings, I, I have not never seen people uh, at least gathering uh, vibration data or wind data. So the tall building design, uh, as you know, there are different types of design, code based design, uh, performance based design, uh, CFD simulation or wind tunnel testing. You, uh, you people, may, there are many people who are much uh, experts in this area more than uh, anybody. So that uh, now what, what I m m wanted to say is now when you wanted to, uh, uh, you know, uh, estimate the natural uh, periods. So one of the very important parameter in designing. So there are three different uh, ways of doing it, empirical and theoretical and numerical way. And uh, I know uh, every, most of the people use all. Uh, so now when it come to the very theoretical model, uh, the Euler Bernoulli beam uh, is the one of the uh, uh, classical uh, beam that we uh, classical beam theory. So we know that uh, can be used to demonstrate the mode shapes. And uh, this is a pure, uh, you know, homogeneous material and flexural deformations. Uh, now we, we can simply, you know, explain uh, the mode shapes, you know, you know tall buildings, uh, we, it is uh, taller and mo mostly governed by the flexural action, you know, can be simplified uh, using a Euler Bernoulli beam. But now uh, the thing is, now this is a flexural action. Now, you know this, if you say a, a dual system, uh, now uh, dual system, now there is a flexural and shear deformation, both. Now, you know, there's a, you know, the total deformation will be uh, something like this. Now, that is, if you consider only the flexural deformation, yeah, we can, uh, you know, uh, use theoretical models like this. But now, if you use uh, flexural deformations, it's generally dominated when the slender structures. However, deformation become important uh, with uh, reduced slenderness. Now, if you have a couple systems, you can consider the shear deformation, then you can use, uh, you know, uh, to combine this to get the natural frequency. And also, uh, if you can consider the torsional modes, a torsional mode is, uh, is the solution is given for, uh, you know, a circular cross section only. So now uh, for these things, it is, uh, uh, we can give a close form solution uh, for rectangular sections. So now uh, we know uh, there are very basic theories that we can estimate the natural frequency of a building. Maybe the, uh, the geometry may become uh, depending on uh, uh, the, if you can uh, idealize the structure, you can find out the natural frequency. The other one is, uh, you know, you can calculate it as uh, always, you can uh, eigenvalue problem. So eigenvalue problem, you can consider a, a multi lump mass model or, uh, you know, a distributed class model, mass plasticity model, uh, sorry, distributed lump mass model or distributed mass model. So then you can uh, solve the eigenvalue problem and finding out the natural frequency and mode shapes. So th that is another possibility. The other one is the finite element modeling so that you can find it, find out uh, the uh, fre frequencies, mode shapes and mass participation and other things that is required for your design. Now, when it comes to these empirical formulas, these are very, uh, you know, simple uh, compared to the other one, but there are, uh, people have been using this. Now for an example, different code of practices for an, uh, the Korean one, uh, American one, then there are Euro codes and Japanese practice. There are, so they have different uh, natural way of have empirical formulas. Now why will tell you why uh, this is uh, coming like that? Because now this is different. We, we, we have been using, people have now confused with which formula to use uh, to estimate the natural frequency of the building. So this is very fairly straightforward. If you look and look into how people have selected this. Now AC710, so based on the results of finite element analysis and wind tunnel test of building shorter than 91 meter. So uh, they are, uh, you know, they are some, they are, the equation has been derived under different conditions and the structural designs and the, you know, practicing America is different from Sri Lanka. 
and from other countries. And these uh, Logomari, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, he used 185 buildings of which 52 were reinforced concrete buildings. So what I think his uh, Euro code adapts. Uh, so Euro code uh, adapts uh, the, his approach with minor, uh, you know, uh, modifications. So here, uh, Euro code formulas and Japanese uh, structures. So, and we have to uh, see that that is a building shorter than 120 meters. So in Sri Lanka, now we have more buildings at all than 120 meters. So now uh, we have to be very careful in, uh, you know, using these values. Then uh, Japanese uh, people, they have used different types of buildings and uh, buildings are shorter than 129 meters deep. And in Korea, uh, the Yoon and Ju measured 22 rectangular residential buildings with the height less than 66 meter having shear walls. So now uh, again, uh, there's a problem comes. People, there is structural types. So if you have a moment resisting frame or moment resisting or, or dual system or out, uh, so di different, different types of uh, structural forms, out trigger system, so the, that's the formula will be different. So if you had more data from type of system or the, uh, then we have much confidence. Now for an example, this topic is of interest uh, since 1980. You can see uh, Ellis, now he has, he has proposed uh, a equation H46 over H to calculate the frequency of buildings. Uh, so that was in 1980, was, at that time they have identified uh, importance of uh, presenting empirical formulas. Now at that time, the now we have to see is the method that we use for design of building is different from uh, what we are doing today. So the practice is different. So therefore uh, the values should be expected to be different but now. And if you see the Japanese one, so we, we can see in Japan, uh, they have measured the building height versus pe uh, natural period. So they have uh, to propose different formula for reinforced concrete structures and steel structures. So they, they have been uh, in the, the Japan normally, uh, unlike Sri Lanka, now we are, the, the main thing is many different parties, Singapore, uh, maybe some Australian different parties come in, you know, uh, we design buildings in Sri Lanka, but in Japan, mainly Japanese people do the design. So they are uh, the, uh, this, uh, what what happened is uh, our buildings are different designed by me different people so uh, it is uh, very interesting so i will tell you why now what uh, here because now when they measured the uh, buildings in korea so what they have found is the equation to estimate the natural period uh, of structures based on uh, building height from 24 meters uh, to 305 meters so they have found that that uh, to fundamental natural frequency can be explained, uh, estimated using H of 51. Now, uh, the thing is, now this is, uh, the, this quote is very important. Now they have, uh, this is uh, another research group uh, reported the considered discrepancy between the values obtained using the foreign codes and the directly measured natural periods and damping ratios of existing reinforced concrete building taller than 150 meters in Korea. Now, we have not been doing this, so we uh, now we have done it. So I think uh, this is because the residential buildings with concrete shear walls systems are more popular in Korea than foreign countries. And because heavier gravi uh, gravitational loads due to the uh, unique flow heating systems called Ondol with an additional unreinforced uh, concrete layer measuring 10 to 15 meters in thickness in residential buildings uh, warrants the use of larger columns or shear wall sizes than those used in foreign codes. So now, now you can see the foreign codes and uh, their practice is different. So, uh, so that obviously there is some difference between people, uh, the, what we are using and what, uh, what is being measured. The consequently damping ratio uh, provided in foreign codes may be not necessarily be directly applicable to the design of the whole building in Sri Lanka. So now uh, this is another uh, important uh, things that I think when we interpret the results that we have obtained from the field study, you can see uh, it is uh, same with the Sri Lankan condition. So this is very important thing to remember. And another one, so people have uh, went one step beyond in Japan and they have proposed uh, this condition. So now we know in uh, design of tall buildings, we have habitability uh, and safety. So uh, 
then uh, what we have using for the designing of two condition is the same and um, you know the uh, same period oh then uh, because now uh, some people use this crack section and uncrack section properties uh, in the design but uh, now i will tell you uh, because in the uh, wind design we are not expecting any of the structural member to go into the nonlinear so it is basically elastic uh, structure so and when it go to the habitability conditions the natural frequency uh, what they have been using is different from uh, what we are using for safety so safety condition and natural uh, so why this is now uh, we can uh, see now similar to that so now why why this is this is different from the earthquake design earthquake design uh, now we expect the structures to go to nonlinear so that period will be significantly ready, uh, elongate due to the, uh, the you know formation of plastic changes or damage in the structure so that uh, the periods will be significantly different from the elastic uh, periods that you should be using for wind design so wind design and earthquake design should not use the same uh, philosophy the and the natural frequency should be uh, decided uh, based on elastic so uh, conditions because the structure will not and because there is a no the safety evaluation level does not mean at ultimate limit say so now another one that i want to is, is the safety level is a elastic range so it does not mean that the ultimate limit state where the frame would be partially damaged but in elastic range not being clarified so because how a building would behave in a non elastic region under extreme strong wind so it is not being clarified how it can be so i think that should be uh, we should not consider it which have statistic compo static component act for a rather long duration compared to the seismic action so seismic action is different so what the period and damping that you use for seismic design should not be used for wind design so we will see uh, the plastic behavior tend to reduce the natural frequency this suggests more wind excitation now i will tell you uh, this is different from non linear behavior but rather uh, you know presence uh, you know uh, relaxation of the structure uh, due to the wind now when it come to the this damping ratios you know uh, how they, uh, that uh, you know uh, we use this damping ratios in the structure both the safety uh, level design so these parameters and uh, in the serviceability limit set you are very much familiar with uh, and you and here also you, it should be uh, clear that the, the values that you, you are using for the uh, wind design should not be used for earthquake design right i will tell you the source of dampings are uh, structural materials structural connections foundation non structural components aerodynamic damping hysteretic yielding of components i think that is the one that we uh, uh, that maybe comes under earthquake loads so there are two types of damping natural and supplementary damping so if you found out the natural a damping is not adequate we can provide supplementary damping so at that time uh, we know uh, analysis should be done mainly uh, i will tell you at the later stage how the habitability uh, rank can be given uh, to assess the serviceability of the structure with, and how to mitigate it so damping ratio is a very critical uh, uh, point in the structural uh, uh, structural engineering uh, you can see the value of uh, maximum structural damping ratio for structures with dynamic response to wind uh, have been made informative rather than normative. So nobody knows. Uh, it, it seems like that. You should seek other sources for advice on possible values of damping as a fraction of height of the building and amplitude of vibration. So to get this is the best best method is to uh, monitor structures and learn from that and use that to uh, for further designing of structures. So if we have Sri Lankan practice, so we know this. There are many structures are being built by our, you know, Sri Lankan engineers. There we, we have very talented people who are designing tall buildings. So they they have been, uh, you know, doing this. So what we can do is, uh, con, you know, con, uh, you know, collaborate with them. So what I am doing is collaborating with them and, you know, measure the structures and learn from that and how we can improve uh, the structures using the available data. So what we are so damping ratios. Uh, there are two uh, levels uh, for uh, as we discussed uh, the visibility and safety uh, from uh, steel and concrete structures is different and also for structural forms 
and type of known uh, you know type of partition walls that we use it's a different so serviceability so reinforced concrete buildings uh, this is i think a peer atc uh, 72 reports uh, that is uh, specify these numbers reinforced concrete design and for safety uh, they uh, reinforced concrete building 1.5 to 2. I, I think I remember it's that is an uh, irrespective of that. So habitability they propose I think 2.5 uh, percent uh, in some uh, some place. Mm -hmm. Now uh, this damping, why this habitability, uh, habitability and safety? Uh, now we have elongation of period. So you have seen uh, habitability damping uh, different two different periods. And also uh, so habitability to uh, safety two different damping. So how it comes? Now you can see before uh, in the structure. Now we we, we call the this uh, philosophy. So before reaching the critical tip, dip ratio, the number of slipping contact surface that means increases with the amplitude. So there are many you know loose points in the structure when you have partition walls. When you have when you have undergo small vibration. So this uh, you know there are some uh, mechanisms developed. So this stick slip contact surface you know sticks and slip. So it is you know, once you come to the elastic stage, of course, but stick and once you have a, uh, loads, you have a slip, then you have uh, more damping. Uh, but this is not no linear. This is mainly uh, you know relaxation of the structure, maybe partitions and other things. Stick slip contact surface are randomly distributed with respect to the amplitude. So at different levels, because when you go along the height, uh, the uh, the displacement response, if it is not the higher uh, you know some other higher modes. You know, in the first mode, the mainly the response will be much. Uh, you know, at the top when you go to the displacement response will be less. So that uh, the difference, uh, the slip, uh, stick slip surfaces developed uh, will be different. So and the different fraction, uh, so effects and the integrated effects of a lot of different friction damping elements cause the building to response at it had a linear viscous damping system. So linear viscous damping actually come from. Uh, this philosophy. So when you have uh, this structure, uh, there are many uh, at different stage. So these thick slips uh, surfaces develop. Then integration of that will act as a you know. Uh, so this uh, figure give a better information. So when you have uh, when uh, the response increases, you can see uh, you know the natural frequency uh, of frequency will be reduced. That mean frequency reduced mean you are uh, period increase so period elongate so we call it the elongation of the peak natural the uh, fundamental uh, period so period increases so on the other hand in controversy so the damping will increase so now if we are in a very you know low amplitude damping like the ambient vibration that i'm discussing here ambient vibration level we are somewhere maybe in the low amplitude plateau so that what we are measuring is uh, mainly uh, for habitability condition. Now, when it uh, acceleration increases, so that uh, your structure will, uh, you know, obviously will, uh, you know, give better uh, damping. Then it will because it is a uh, safety level. Now, the safety level means not, uh, you know, damage to structure. So at one point of time, the elastic damping or the, that it provides will be, you know, will be constant. So no more. So there, the, in between that. Many stick slip surfaces will be developed, and you will have, uh, you know, introduced damping. And uh, so, what we have measured, if we measure now in Sri Lanka, unfortunately, we don't have. Uh, I don't think that we, um, if unless there is a tornado or some big huge wind, uh, I will not be able to measure at this stage. So, but we can predict uh, this uh, high amplitude plateau if we know the low amplitude. Plateau values. So, at least what I'm starting here with this, how I'm going can you know uh, use uh, habitability condition, uh, you know, measure the vibration at habitability condition, and data we can predict to uh, the safety condition level damping. So, so what you have to know is the critical diff ratio where you you develop all the stick slip, slip surfaces normally in the range of uh, you know uh, one into ten to the power minus four to minus five. Now this is the what I have uh, said. Uh, so if you the people, are, I think it's very important to know people in 1986. So researchers at that time have idea, you know, have identified this phenomena. But we are not some start, you know, some countries are using in performance-based design of tall buildings. But uh, still, I think I don't think we are using it. 
So there is a, a once you you have simple formula to finding out the natural frequency, then you can uh, you if you know the habitability uh, damping and the habitability, what you can do is you can find the, uh, calculate the uh, damping at uh, high amplitude plateau. That is a safety level. So it's still uh, uh, damping at uh, elastic range, but uh, we can uh, calculate the uh, damping at these uh, two levels. Right now. Uh, so another one that uh, another quick example that I will go through uh, now identify the damping ratio of buildings uh, at different countries have uh, you know Japan have proposed now and uh, you know Japan is I think uh, will ahead so they have pro proposed different different methods right now well let's see how we are going to do it in Sri Lanka so what we have to do is I have selected several tall buildings and uh, we measured basically uh, basically we have done the vibration based monitoring of buildings uh, so i will just briefly explain quickly what are the uh, techniques that we have used of course we have used uh, fourier transformation this may be very much familiar to extract the frequency domain uh, convert the time domain response to the frequency domain response and finding out the dominant frequencies uh, then uh, another one that uh, we have been doing is our estimate the damping ratios of buildings so that is now what we are doing is we are at the very first stage so we are now can we are we are the gathering the vibration data that we are gathering at the undamaged state of these structures so later when we wanted to compare with this so that may be another uh, several years not several maybe another decade time so we can use this data to, uh, and we can learn what we have um, ob obtained from these measurements so now we have this ambient vibration data and normally that is a, you know very small vibration due to wind so there is a this are uh, ambient due to the wind and now what we have to do is we have to finding out the damping to finding out damping we need the impulse response function now is one of the challenge that we have is how to estimate the impulse response function from the uh, our uh, ambient vibration data so what we have to do is we have used two uh, in here used two different techniques random decrement techniques so we have uh, uh, impulse response impulse response parts and we have the random part but how we are going to extract you know from this uh, uh, impulse response fun function is so now what we have done is a random part this is a signal processing techniques mainly electrical uh, you know computer engineers they are, they are very much familiar with this random parties we have eliminated by averaging enough samples so we have set the sample size and the trigger band and the low so to that one i have set up the lower trigger level and upper trigger trigger level uh, so uh, then we have to uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, average samples as much as possible uh, to get the uh, the uh, impulse response function from the ambient vibration data so that is one of the challenge challenging the other one is that we have used a natural excitation technique it's a time domain and frequency domain there are two different uh, methods that we have used uh, so in this case again we have used auto and cross correlation functions uh, so this is also from the ambient vibration data we extract the uh, impulse response function using uh, two different data so we have then another technique that we can use is the uh, the, uh, the uh, wavelets so wavelets are uh, in this example we are, still we have used it maybe in this year my student will uh, try uh, the wavelets uh, in uh, so they are planning to do this uh, wavelet transformation uh, also so what we here is the more advantage is like in the um, uh, other than the fourier transformation we can convert uh, you know once you convert the time domain to frequency domain the time domain data is uh, you know uh, it's simply vanish but in this regards we have both time domain and frequency domain data so we can clearly uh, use this to extract the natural frequencies and damping ratio these edges shows the natural frequencies uh, then if you cut a section in that uh, way so we can extract the uh, damping ratio so these are uh, more details another one that we can do is the free vibration data so this is one of the thing that i have done what i have done is uh, uh, the building that we have used is the, the, the twin peak buildings so they are what we have done is we try to see like the bridge that i had you remember my bridge uh, that uh, 
uh, I, we have been doing pre-vibration data. So I was, I, I was trying whether I can excite these uh, buildings uh, using uh, the crane. So crane, uh, but uh, now uh, the crane that we have, I, what I have found is to excite such a building, we need huge load. So we are not uh, in a position to apply that much of load, but uh, the contractor kindly agreed to put, uh, you know, the normal day to day, what they are using for construction, that type of load. But we could, uh, we'd ask the, you know, a person to, you know, release the load and try to apply the brake and then uh, again, release it and excite the building. But it was very difficult at that time because I think we need much more, uh, you know, uh, severe, uh, heavy loads uh, in, in the uh, structure to get. So the force vibration test, uh, there are force vibration tests also can be carried out. Force vibration tests allow comparison with the ambient vibration test results and provide, uh, you know, uh, you know, we can compare once you have a force vibration. Test. So one way of doing it is synchronize human movements. So we can ask, uh, we can say 10, 20 people and climb to the uh, top story of the building or then we can uh, synchronize, you know, uh, you know, we can push it. We know the first mode period from the empirical formula, calculate it, and maybe we can have some kind of, you know, uh, clapping or something uh, to indicate when you have to push. So if you synchronize in that way inside the building, maybe we can excite the building in first mode. So this uh, force vibration test should be done at calm wind condition because uh, I will tell you the ambient vibration test, uh, ambient vibration should be, you know, um, should be very much small compared to force vibration. Otherwise, there is no meaningful result. This requirements means highly likely that two tests cannot be conducted the same day. So this is very challenging. You cannot do when there's a wind, you can do the ambient vibration. If there's a wind, you cannot do force vibration. Um, because, uh, because you can see the ambient vibration level. Now this is if you have pushed the uh, structure using, uh, you know, the rhythmically we push. And actually this is like a, you resonate the structure. The first mode, you push the structure at the first mode. Then you can see the response acceleration increases when it goes more, you know, beyond the ambient, ambient vibration level, you can release the structures. Then you can, you know, you can see the decay. So you can estimate the damping ratio. Also the force vibration test, uh, you can do the similar way, right? Right now, so what we have uh, now, uh, my one of my students now uh, actually designing the force vibration uh, equipment for mainly we will, I am not sure whether we will be able to use it for high rise building, but first we are trying to use it for bridges. Then we will come back to tall buildings. I am not sure whether anybody will allow uh, me to, uh, you know, set these things in their building and excite this. I, I, I do hope this is a good chance to learn uh, that nothing will be happened to this structure because we are, you know, that is, will be not too big, uh, you know, like machines, but uh, it is just enough to adequate to excite this structure beyond the ambient vibration level. Human uh, synchronized vibration, of course, we can do. We will try in the next uh, trial run.
so uh, in this uh, what i want to share is now we have done uh, three uh, mainly uh, uh, we had uh, we had uh, actually the people are very kindly to be, uh, you know allow us to do this uh, type of test in these uh, three buildings the uh, capital twin peak towers uh, i think tower number 1 uh, we had been using and altair tower uh, and colombo city center we, we had uh, already finished our measurements now there is a huge uh, challenge in measure, measuring Uh, you know interpreting these results as it takes time right now this uh, structure is uh, mainly designed uh, the twin peak tower it's uh, uh, designed uh, uh, by a sri lankan uh, company so then uh, it has numeral uh, numerous uh, you know uh, um, services and uh, we had uh, so what we have done is so rather than uh, what i would like to explain what we have done Uh, this capital twin peak tower uh, we have set up accelerometers though this is a mainly vibration based measurement techniques so we have uh, choose the num number one tower so the we have set up our accelerometers uh, we are using a very high sensitive accelerometers normally with uh, you know low quality accelerometers we cannot do it because there are a lot of noise and because we are looking at a very tall you know slender structures with very low frequency if we had a, you know slight you know noises we cannot capture what we are looking for so we we need this kind of you know very high uh, sensitive and expensive tools for this and we had set up two accelerometers uh, at the two edges and we measured uh, four channels so that is the direction one uh, we had two and direction two we had another two then uh, we uh, start the monitoring uh, you know at the uh, morning uh, morning normally start in the morning normally it should go because we uh, there are certain conditions to be maintained and it goes until the maybe it can go from early morning 10 o'clock to 12 pm in the night so this case it has happened it went um, nearly to 12 o'clock because we need data stationarity of the data so we need long measurements and we cannot just rely on certain measurements but when we need fi find find out sometimes the data is not that has been some problem so we have to do it again so it is one hour data maybe so that you have to be there so you cannot go up and down because still there is not no lift operating sometimes so we have to stay there so there are a lot of other problems involved with that so this ambient when you do the monitoring there should be low magnitude excitation so to uh, sampling frequency is very important thing that we have noise to signal ratio if there is uh, is any stationarity so the uh, we measured mainly the wind, wind speed you can see the wind, wind speed is like uh, you know almost 15 because what what why i am showing this if the wind speed is very small and we will not be able to get a meaningful results uh, because for the same building the next day that i went that day the wind speed was around 3 to 4 meters per second so what my normal practice is i normally uh, process itself at the site and check whether there is meaningful result. so what i have found is there is no meaningful result so that day is best so that is the challenge that we have in monitoring so that maybe uh, can be avoided by having you know real time 24/7 monitoring of, uh, in structures so we can do it we need the help of the industry because we are just i i am not a, i am not practicing in that area but i am a research i am trying to help uh, you know uh, the industry by doing uh, how we can uh, you know but i am doing at best my research so let's see now uh, the displacement we have calculated so the displacement actually we have found that that day uh, maybe maximum 5 mm displacement was there in the structure this is just a roughly cal rough calculation so then uh, what we have done is uh, we have uh, extract the you know no uh, the signal and we see whether what are the uh, you know uh, this uh, 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 you know uh, the frequencies dominant frequencies then we try it because whatever we are getting is not meaningful unless we have you know finite element analysis so we cannot just simply say that is a dominant frequency there's a back to back work so that we should have both numerical and uh, you know measure data so to because just to in interpret this otherwise we cannot interpret maybe this uh, peak can be due to some other thing because the numerical obviously what i wanted to stress again 
finite element results will not be matched with the experimental results. So that is very obvious. Uh, I think we are expecting it. But to see whether there can be a fun, uh, you know, something very uh, dominant frequency which will represent the one of the translation modes, because in this study we are mainly focused on the translation mode. We, the structure will not excite uh, in other, other higher modes due to the you know this is a, we, we are discussing about ambient vibration, no? not the force vibration. Now in this case, what we have found is uh, you know the experiments that uh, the natural frequencies from the experiment is as, you know much uh, you know uh, the frequencies the periods or the frequencies are much la somewhat larger than what we have measured. So that is expected uh, because now uh, it is because now we uh, you know the structures in finite elements we, we are not considering any you know these para uh, you know partition walls and other things and there can be other uh, things that coming with the, our practice of design so that is un understood so but at least i have found it out that we, we can interpret this as uh, natural frequencies of the structure now if we say the natural frequency variation with the time there is not much variation we got the same results from 12 30 pm to you know midnight am uh, almost uh, you know within uh, uh, 12 hour time lag then what we have do is we try to compare those values uh, with what we have got from the uh, you, you know empirical formulas in the literature and i think in some some uh, you know uh, we are in a good agreement with some of the uh, you know uh, code practices like a korean codes come closer to that euro code also come closer to that australian new zealand code yes that is come, come, come very closer to what we have measured. So I think uh, that use of these codes and the preliminary design, these empirical formulas, we, we can see the possibility of using this in the, uh, you know, at the preliminary design, design stage of the design. Then the next uh, thing that we have done is we have implemented the, uh, uh, the random decrement techniques and next and uh, yeah, our te uh, other techniques for the estimations of. Uh, uh, damping ratios and we compared with the you know international codes as the, the at the beginning i said like the korean people did like sri lanka so we will we have this the, the structures designed for sri lanka let's compare with the uh, struct, uh, design codes for other foreign countries so now we can see that the, the damping ratios are well below one you can see aij uh, and korean uh, codes uh, predict uh, the Dampings at uh, such dampings, but now we have to see this habit. Now we are at the habitability region. Now, when we go to safety region, the damping ratio may be larger than one. So, so that case, the euro code, you know, ISO can be applicable. So, there's no clear indication that this one is for habitability or safety. So, now here we know this is habitability. So, what we can do is like for an example, the other direction also. Uh, the almost all the cases is damping ratio is less than one. So what we can do is uh, you can see this summary. It is almost like 0.5. This is for habitability condition. And the comparison of other codes, the the these are the co like uh, American codes. They are giving some one num particular number. So other than that, other uh, you know these uh, structures which is given height dependent. Uh, formulas for damping can be applied for habitability region. So, yeah, but once now, uh, as I say, once we establish the habitability region, we can decide the safety level damping. So, uh, maybe uh, this some other like, you know, this AC does not specify whether to use use it for you know habitability or safety. So maybe you know, and uh, you know, other other codes are um, like same. So maybe. If you calculate it, once I calculate it, I can see whether that is <coughs> agreeing with the results, you know, presented in other design codes. So let's see the case of Alta Tau. So as you know, the structural form is completely different from uh, Twin Peak. Now, but uh, what we can learn, you, know, you can see the flexible structure. It is, uh, you know, there is a two two towers. So one, it is. Uh, there is a flexible in the you know perpendicular to that so this is the stiff side so this day so what this is what i am doing is uh, i am measuring the data you know processing the data itself in the side 
so that you, I know because it is a very time consuming and you know lot of resources at least five six people needed full time to be there if there is something happened and the supply should be there water so because we are at the top floor of a building we, we cannot go up and down because we had to you know take care of our uh, all the instruments and other things so it's very challenging so this is a team that uh, that day we went to a measurement so we have been kindly assisted by uh, many people and uh, so that uh, so wind speed and uh, that maybe that tower had uh, three, around three millimeter displacement now we can see uh, so when we have see that data we can see some clear peaks now uh, the very the challenge is how to interpret it now if we, i compare the the finite element analysis results uh, of the tower uh, you can see uh, the first mode period is the from the finite element model is 0.13 uh, is around 7.5 so this is a 240 meter structure uh, so that then uh, it is in the flexible direction and uh, the second mode uh, is a torsional one and the third mode is around uh, two times that one it's 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.3 it's in the other direction now uh, what so i will get uh, clear peaks but i need to know how i can you know uh, discuss this at least what is the meaning of that so to that one i need back to back finite element analysis results. So now here, I have these clear peaks in the one direction. Uh, in the other direction, it's in the stiff direction. I cannot see, this is the flexible direction of the building. I can see 0.2, around 0.2 and it's now two times 0.4. Maybe I, I'm thinking this may be the first mode, this may be the second mode. I can clearly see in the other direction, yeah, this 0.2 is there and 0.4 also there. In between that, I cannot see any other peak so that uh, what I'm uh, measuring, so this is very low, because there is a no possibility that torsional mode will be excited at this wind level. Mainly, so that maybe the first mode only uh, can be excited. So that I think uh, in this particular building, the point around point two is the uh, the uh, the natural frequency of the structure. Uh, because uh, it's dependent now that's uh, already, I think the most of the things are ordered from India and they are fitting it. So it is different from what we are doing in Sri Lanka. So that also affect the damping and natural frequency. So this is very uh, nice thing. So the measured uh, full scale data, I, I may have, uh, so you can see, uh, uh, sorry, this the value is uh, different. Uh, the value should be 0.21, I think. I think is, I just copy the previous uh, slide data. So that is a mistake. But then you can see uh, 0.2, it is bit like 0.21, uh, so like 0.21. So you can see uh, most of the codes, like Euro codes, Australian codes, you know, actually predict that value. Korean code, point, you know, 0 0.19, 0 0.2. It's very close to that. Uh, 0.228 actually is a bit larger. Only this, uh, you know, in, in that regard, sometimes this uh, AC codes have better. Uh, agreement with the finite element result but not with the uh, because I, I i can see that because australian american code is american uh, values are you know predicted from the finite element analysis models mainly so that it gives better indication maybe but uh, field test data uh, agreed with the other other code so so aij practice and now, now and other practices i have uh, put down here the damping values that we have uh, estimated so this is mainly you have to understand we are discussing about habitability damping. Now when somebody asks, okay, after maybe, uh, I, I will not say like that, but unfortunately if our country hit by an earthquake, maybe uh, maybe another, you know, uh, vicinity. So maybe we need some data for the health monitoring purpose. At least we need this data in regular intervals. Now the challenge that I have is, uh, you know, people are reluctant to, you know, one time we, they allow, second time they may allow, I don't know they, whether they may allow uh, me to conduct this at every six month interval of this, uh, you know, because uh, it's not of a gain to uh, actually directly, they, they do not see any benefits. But if we have this data, I think we can learn uh, in the future because we can apply the health monitoring techniques, structural health monitoring techniques, not the periods and damping days, but also other statistical feature days. 
because I need this data uh, to do the analysis. We, we need, uh, we can artificial neural network or machine learning or any, any other technique. We need data of two conditions. So I think we should con continue this, uh, you know, uh, to monitor structures. Now the, the, the test that the recently what we have, we have conducted is the Columbus city center tower, uh, which is very interesting structure. And we, uh, so that, that day, I would like to say that the wind was very, not too heavy. So actually we, our structure could not excite it up, uh, excite into that, you know, much level. So I think some of the results that we got is it's very difficult to interpret. There are two clear peaks close to each other and we don't have a finite element model of this one. Uh, not the results, we, we don't need the finite element model, but uh, results. So it is very difficult to interpret, but I am thinking, and when you do health monitoring, you should have that confidence to eliminate what you uh, not require. Or, or in, in the other words, say, if you do not feel your gut feeling and confidence is very important. If there is something that you think is not what is representing the structure, you have that, you should have that confidence to eliminate the data, right? So with that, I, I'm thinking like 0.34 is the structural fundamental frequency. Uh, so therefore we have compared it with data. Maybe this habitability, this Japanese code is in good agreement with the value uh, that obtained from the, uh, all other codes predicted less uh, natural frequency uh, compared to that mean uh, this, uh, uh, what we have measured and uh, the damping also uh, similar to less than one. So now if you put that in, into a, a universal term so that uh, we have this damping and natural period evaluation of tall building of full scale data in Korea. So this paper compared different, uh, you know, different uh, code predictions, uh, which is mainly based, uh, some are, you know, height dependent, some are not, right? Now we can see uh, where our structures are like. So now this is very important criteria. Now, well, why this is uh, important? Now uh, we know, uh, when we uh, do these structures, so when it comes to this uh, uh, habitability uh, to vibration, so this is also important. It is also health monitoring one. With, we know, should know the structure is safe, but the occupants are safe. So that is another very interesting uh, thing that uh, I, I have been uh, done some work re re related to that one. Now in this one, uh, the American, uh, this is the uh, Japanese uh, guidelines. So the, depending on the, uh, uh, you know, you can see there is, uh, you know, uh, the velocity increases and the acceleration increases normally in the structure. So there then, but we should know uh, there is a performance rank. So now if it is uh, uh, the accelerations are less, very good, a uh, good standard pair. And you can see the X axis is frequency dependent. So at which frequency uh, this, you know, your average structures, Mainly, I think uh, less than. So this is about horizontal frequency of the tall building, whole building. So that you know, um, generally less than one. So that is my, my my understanding. It's less than one. So I think we are we are interested on this portion of the graph, right? Right. We are interesting on this portion of the graph, and you also it is a frequency dependent. Why frequency dependent? And uh, this and uh, many studies have been done. Uh, for an example, uh, uh, Professor Priyan Mendis. He, he had uh, some work done uh, related to this one. Uh, I have seen his uh, presenting I mean, at many different forums. And uh, there are other, other, other people just directly using uh, some numbers uh, because normally uh, just uh, because it is less than, uh, so because uh, there are some uh, uh, people who do not uh, consider the frequency uh, factor because it's a frequency weighted uh, should be there. Uh, and not the, uh, you know, the, some values, it's the, depending on the height, but in uh, tall buildings, normally it's less than one, uh, one hertz. Why I'm saying this frequency component is important. Now, uh, you know, that's the tall buildings, the tall building horizontal vibration is important. So we are in the tall building and uh, now let's say we are, I'm sitting on the tall building. I can, uh, you know, uh, simply idealize my body to a lump mass model like a structure. Uh, you know, you know, you can model multi degree of freedom system and like that, but you can again simplify it us to a lump mass model. And uh, we have different natural frequencies in our body. So depending on that, because now you can see uh, 
uh, depending on our posture now whether we are sitting or sleeping or let's say you are sleeping on top of a building uh, then uh, you have horizontal uh, you know uh, vibration then at a different uh, depending on the uh, you know uh, the pre uh, frequency of the structure what you are feeling is different now so this this give uh, some indication you can actually use kind of you know dampers this is a or this is actually this picture is not valid here uh, this is a flow vibration control but if you have if you know that uh, you know the for an example from the the vibration level you can add you know uh, dampers and reduce the vibration to acceptable level so this is at the uh, but in that case it is in the frequency uh, domain so you should know uh, and other aspects that the last aspects that uh, maybe I, i'm going to show is in tall buildings the measured the vibration due to walking also very important because now we are in a very tall building normally i have seen like for an example uh, twin peak building that i have been uh, for measure so that's uh, there uh, you know uh, the banquet hall is at the very top maybe there is some kind of dancing or something then then people in the down downstairs maybe get afraid because because the structure excited due to the walking so there are different uh, um, you know uh, different uh, criteria for uh, you know uh, governing the damping so that is the flow, flow frequency not the structural frequency this is vertical frequencies uh, that we are discussing so that like that uh, there are, we can compare with uh, uh, design uh, you know perception levels on which that is uh, whether it is correct so this is one of the study that i have done so they are we have monitored the acceleration and frequencies and calculate from the vibration we calculate the rms and vibration dose values and compare with the uh, you know uh, the acceptable levels and uh, so then uh, that we had done so now uh, so that is i think uh, mainly uh, uh, what i wanted to say uh, so with that uh, i would like to uh, conclude my uh, presentation Thank you. Uh, thank you, Doctor, uh, for this uh, eye-opening uh, presentation. I think uh, this is the right time to do uh, this kind of a presentation and make uh, aware of the engineering faculty about these uh, tall buildings and uh, the related uh, issues. So. Uh, we will uh, move to the q uh, and session uh, yes. so uh, please uh, if anyone need to raise a question uh, please uh, raise their hands in the q and session the q and a uh, section uh, i will uh, enable the microphone for you to uh, ask the questions uh, doctor uh, there is a question or comment uh, from uh, mohammad sifa it says the damping techniques can be reduced by uh, turning building architectural shapes or aerodynamic effect uh, which shape mostly uh, worldwide so yeah yeah i understood what he says because now recently we had uh, i think students who finished his master thesis from peradin i think is dr kushan students so we had done some studies related to that one the shape uh, it's bit, but it's not uh, discussing on accelerations but mainly the force how we can reduce the force by you know uh, change in the shapes of the building you basically that has been actually been doing people trying to you know uh, improve the aerodynamics damping or reduce the wind effects you, uh, by changing the shapes so that has been done but in uh, sri lanka now still Uh, as i remember we had the circular buildings you know boc and you know, wtc uh, then now only that people are trying to you know uh, introduce you know, architecturally pleasing kind of different structures to now, now it's very good trend so we, uh, it's i think going with the international trend okay thank you doctor then uh, there's a open question from anthony it's uh... Kindly let us know what is the recommended wind speed uh, for Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah, this is a good, uh, you know, <laughs> this is a, a topic of uh, you know much debate. Uh, 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 there are many different quotes, you know, this uh, chapter three, Australian, New Zealand, uh, and uh, Euro. Uh, as I remember, 
so this 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 we have three three second gas and 10 minutes average uh, you know uh, one hour average so there are many different things i think uh, if i'm not mistaken a study done by our, our professor uh, kishan jai singh i think he recommended uh, you know this uh, 30 uh, I, I, as i remember it's 30 33 millimeters per second or 38 meters per second but this this is also depending on the type of it is a post hazard uh, you know uh, structure or just a normal structure uh, so it, it is a, the, you can uh, depending on the uh, uh, the structure that you design i think uh, normally it because it's if you, i think you are re referring to colombo uh, the zone uh, 3 generally i think uh, this 38 i think 38 meters per second is a good number Okay, uh, then uh, uh, there's another question from... Uh, but that is Kiripuram. a second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, another question from uh, Kitiparan. Uh, thank you for the great work, uh, Dr. Samit. How did you measure the displacement? Uh, it calculated from acceleration measurement or measured? Yeah, uh, this is good. Uh, but uh, we have, what we have done is we calculate... From the acceleration measurement, we have calculated the displacement. Uh, so we from, uh, assume that it is... Uh, excite this structure is exciting in the fundamental mode and using simple uh, equations uh, we have calculated the, uh, the expected uh, approximate displacement so at least we give a better indication from the right. then, uh, there's another uh, comment uh, from uh, maintaining accuracy on sensor performance on measuring of uh, blowing air speed force and expansion millimeter system it's uh, Basically, so then uh, we have got another question. I think if you uh, place accelerometer in the top, you can't get good results. The second mode results are there any reason for selecting the location? Because in uh, some literature, they recommend some other locations. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, th this is a, uh, another point to discuss. Uh, so, now uh, before we do, we uh, go to the you know measurement, we know. Uh, that uh, the structure will be, you know, excited in the fundamental modes of frequency. So, higher mode excitation, you know, uh, is expected if we have a much higher wind or if we have maybe an earthquake scenario kind of thing, then higher modes will be excited. Or oh, otherwise, we have to use force vibration. Uh, we can ca capture, you, you know, depending on the mode shapes, the first mode shapes uh, is, you know, uh, you have the, and then, uh, the shape is like uh, I, I have shown you maybe uh, the first mode shapes. Can can I share my screen? This for first mode shapes that I had in empirical formula. So, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So this is the first mode shapes. Now you know, uh, right? Uh, can I yeah, just I will just show my screen, no? right? Okay. Uh, you know this uh, like uh, the first mode shapes like this. So that, uh, you know, as a tall building, if I got, uh, you know, uh, turn it round, so the largest displacement will be at the top. So for, to capture the first mode, that's better. But, the, uh, you know, second mode, we need, actually, no one sensor is not enough. So we need more sensors, right? So what my focus, we, third mode, capture third mode, we need more sensors to capture this. So that should be array of sensors that I have been, I have to implement. So we are not in that position. Uh, we, I think we have now, I think, a set of wireless sensors, maybe uh, still, I think that that has been reached Peradini. So we will be using that l later uh, to, uh, because otherwise, uh, you know, from uh, how we are using wired sensors now, wired sensors cannot be placed at different locations and we are not expecting the structure to excite into uh, higher modes because the, we are considering very low ambient vibration. We expect the structure to go fundamental modes in this study. So, uh, then, therefore, uh, the, pla the place that we place the acceleration accelerometer is, I think, the best location. Right. So I have post uh, sharing my screen. Okay. So, uh, I think uh, there are, uh, we are not uh, just. Uh, Good one question uh, from Champa. 
do you think uh, that there should be a regulatory body uh, or any authenticator this your for building health monitoring of high rise buildings in sri lanka uh, <laughs> i think <laughs> this should be first very first should be a uh, authority for, should be established for bridges <laughs> Uh, then I think uh, similar thing. Uh, it is uh, always better to uh, you know. Uh, it, I I don't uh, for buildings also. I think my, this is a very uh, uh, you know the the place that is most required is bridges in Sri Lanka. Uh, I think uh, we have no more questions. Uh, so Hi. thank you very much, doctor. Yeah, just thank you. Thank to, you. Uh, the, just. Uh, to give you a vote of thanks, I will invite uh, Dr. Moussa, uh, our head and uh, head of uh, solutions from Minsi Sri Lanka. Over to you, Moussa. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Budika, for your very generous and uh, passionate uh, presentation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it was very uh, uh, I say, uh, interesting to see that you are already uh, thinking, even though today we can consider that Sri Lanka, you are starting to design the store building. Uh, but uh, your work, it's, uh, I think, very, very important. And uh, I think that uh, you have sent a clear message in this platform is you need the support from the industry. Yes. Definitely. Because uh, is uh, by uh, gathering all this information that is very much somehow uh, fitting with uh, our, uh, uh, our island condition, that uh, sure, we will be more ready to design a structure that uh, lasts uh, really uh, uh, according to the intended service life, okay? That is definitely, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's not only pioneering, but it is really a crucial step you are taking here. It's, a, it's a great. Uh, I just have uh, something that I would like to ask you, you know, because very often I, uh, I remember uh, if I take tall building, uh, very often lateral deformation uh, can be overtaken by uh, designing a concrete with uh, some engineering properties. For example, if I take the E modulus, the elastic modulus, uh, you know, therefore if we move from let's say uh, 28 gigapascal that is 28000 megapascal to let's say uh, 40 gigapascal close to the e modulus of aluminum you are able to go taller if you look for example the world uh, uh, i say uh, uh, tall and slender building in new york the the stein uh, uh, the steinway tower it has a ratio between the width to the height of 24 uh, yes. Let's say it's about uh, alt, uh, it's twice Altair Tower. Huh? Yes. Uh, Altair, what we have here, it's around 480 meter, yeah. with a width of only 20 meter, only yes. 20 meter. Therefore, this is more or less the picture I see on the e-flyer. I think I don't know if this is exactly the building we are talking about. Yes. But if you look, this building first is not steel; it's concrete. It's high strength concrete. Yeah. But the e modulus go up to almost 42 gigapascal. 42. Uh, you see, and that is exactly what I would like to say here to add because, uh, okay, I mean, I'm more from the uh, concrete engineering part, yes. uh, but uh, we see a lot of uh, building that has like Taipei 101, uh, like uh, mm. Petronas Tower. So we have a lot of examples like this where we, uh, we push the envelope in terms of uh, concrete specification, not based only on compressive strengths because, you know, yes. I can take uh, two concrete that has a 60 megapascal, great high strength, but one will have only 28 gigapascal e modulus. The second one, we can have 40 gigapascal. This makes a big, big difference yeah. when it comes to the relevance of uh, what you call uh, rightly is the, the occupancy comfort. Comfort. Yes, because uh, if, you, if, you, if everybody recall the, the Twin Tower in New York before the, the I say, the, I say the, the terror attack, this was a steel building. Huh? Yes. And uh, uh, due to the wind lateral uh, uh, I say def uh, deformation because in the Edson River you have very strong wind uh, channel there. Therefore, the occupancy of the last floors they could not sell it. Even rent it was difficult because people feel like seasick on the top. Yes, yes. You see, and uh, when I, I'm just sitting now in in the Hilton uh, Tower because I'm doing my uh, kind of like quarantine uh, period, and I see in front of me the the Lotus Tower. 
And I would be very interesting that if you could have access to this Lotus Tower and try to see, you know, during uh, wind uh, time, you know, what is the deflection at the top? Because this is very, I was doing some calculation, the width to length ratio is around 18 to 20. It's quite uh, interesting to see to which extent, you know, the comfort uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be somehow uh, uh, for occupancy uh, things. Therefore, yes. uh, really this topic is very important. It's very interesting. And I think that in Sri Lanka today, when we look all technology that uh, 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 when I look uh, really a state of the art uh, infrastructure are, are, going, are, are built today in Sri Lanka. And uh, this is really a, a very important topic that we, we have to uh, somehow take into consideration is really how to build, uh, I say, uh, uh, for life, huh? how to build a country with, uh, with infrastructure that really lasts, huh? that is yes. very much less maintenance. Thank you so much for this contribution. And also I would like to thank all the, I say, uh, all participants. Uh, uh, I could see during the whole time when you were presenting, you had almost 110, 120 people sitting and listening to you. This is really quite interesting, quite great. And I would like to thank all of you. And uh, I hope this will be the last uh, virtual one uh most probably the next uh, uh, knowledge sharing session you know we will be all uh, uh, i say uh, we will do it face to face in our i to i innovation to uh, to industry collaboration space in paliagoda mm -hmm. uh, we hope that and uh, and uh, we are really in a good position today in sri lanka because uh, really the the number of cases are almost nil and therefore we can take this opportunity again i would like to also thanks the i say the uh, Institute of Engineer of Sri Lanka, Civil Engineering Sectional Committee, to somehow uh, organize jointly with INSEE this uh, event. This is uh, event number 15, I think, uh, in row since 2018. And uh, again, I would like to thank all of you, and I hope next time we can be all together and uh, having even a good apero at, uh, at eye to eye, and I uh, hope this will be for the next one. Thank you so much, and uh, wish you a nice, uh, nice evening. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.